None of this is a surprise, and by this I mean the one world government, the one world religion. How did I know that that was coming? I would say it's for the same reason that this <laughs> is on my desk. Because if you were paying attention, and Catholics were for a long time over the past, the course of the past hundred years, many Catholics were paying attention because they realized fully that we were warned that this day is coming. On September number 19th, 1846, two French shepherd children, Melanie Clavet and Maximin Girard, encountered a beautiful lady sitting on a rock and weeping high in the French Alps at a place called La Salette. She told them that the reason for her sadness was the betrayal of her son and neglect of his holy church throughout the world. The lady's message and accompanying secrets include such apocalyptic warnings of the unleashing of the powers of hell all throughout the world. The church officially approved the apparition of Our Lady of La Salette, and Pope Leo XIII erected a basilica on the very spot where she had appeared, some six miles from the nearest mountain village. Now, whatever you think of Marian apparitions, I know some of you Protestant folks out there, you think we worship the, the Mother of God. Of course, that's nonsense. We don't worship the Mother of God. You think we worship statues. That's nonsense. We don't worship statues. We'll get into that in another show. But whatever you think of Marian apparitions, now I'm, I happen to be German. Father is very German. And so I'm naturally skeptical about that sort of thing. Nevertheless, here's the thing. Everything that we're living through right now was foretold. And nothing happening today comes as any surprise to traditional Catholics again. Over the years, in fact, I've made many pilgrimages and take, taken groups to these places uh, to see what was really going on there, the places of apparition. I've read the dusty old books. I've read the transcripts of what the seers had said, and what was written down by Catholic priests. You know what I mean? They're not written down by some the milk lady or the matchmaker lady, but by priests assigned by the bishops to find out what was going on, extremely intelligent men who would try to discern and find out if there was something actually going on here. And they're writing all this stuff down a hundred years ago or more. So you can deny apparitions. You can say, hey, you know what? Private revelation, Catholics don't have to believe it. True enough. But that doesn't answer the question. How did these little shepherd children, how did they come up with this stuff? How did they know that these things were coming? I mean, look at this. 1846, the church will be eclipsed. One will not know which is the true Pope. The holy sacrifice will cease to be offered in churches. Now, if this is a hoax, how did those little children know that Rome would eventually lose the faith, as was predicted well over 100 years ago at La Salette? She said that God is going to strike in a manner without precedent. Woe to the inhabitants of earth. God is going to exhaust his wrath. She said that society is on the eve of the most terrible scourges. One must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink the chalice of the wrath of God. Lucifer, she said, with a great number of demons, will be unleashed from hell and they will abolish the faith. The church will be delivered over to great persecutions. This will be the time of darkness. The church will have a frightful crisis. She said civil and ecclesiastical powers would be abolished. She said that all order and all justice would be trampled underfoot. One will see only homicides, hatred, jealousy, lying, and discord, without love for country, without love for family. She predicted that civil rulers will have one same design, which will be to abolish and to make disappear all religious principle in order to make room for materialism, atheism, spiritualism, and all kinds of vices. She said the wicked will deploy all their malice, they will kill themselves, they will massacre themselves mutually. She said Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. Now that was La Salette. Now, fast forward 80 years. Let's go to Fatima, Portugal. The year is 1917. Again, three little shepherd kids claimed that they had been told by a beautiful lady that nations would be annihilated, evil fashions will be introduced, 
great war was coming. Satan would wage a final battle against marriage and the family, exactly as is happening today. Again, I went to Fatima to make sure. I went there to check it out. Now, I've been to Fatima several times. And what comes out, again, is that some of the greatest intellects, priests, popes in Europe, absolutely believe something had happened there. They made feast days, Lady of Fatima feast day. They made pilgrimages. Every single pope, including Francis, pilgrimed, journeyed all the way to this little town in Fatima because something happened there. The church put her full authority behind it, saying, yes, something happened here. <laughs> So in 1917, here's what the lady said. If people do not stop offending God, Russia will spread errors throughout the world. The good will be martyred. Several nations annihilated. Now, let's move on a little bit. 50 years after that, our lady came once again, this time to Japan, a place called Akita. And there she warned, this, is where, this one is terrifying, because it's like Our Lady is getting more adamant. At La Salette, she's talking about the spiritual war. At Fatima, she's talking about the annihilation of nations, right? She comes to, to Akita, and she says there's going to be massive civil war right at the heart of Christ's church. Cardinal against cardinal, bishop against bishop. Well, again, I'm not a Medjugorje guy. I'm not talking about stuff that hasn't been fully approved, right? And again, I repeat, I'm German, so I'm, naturally dis I'm not naturally disposed to just jumping into every apparition and saying, yeah, it's got to be true. Some of them are, are, are crazy. They're not, they're not. They're fake, right? So I needed to make sure that in the case of Akita that it was true. And so Walter and I, once again, went to Japan to see what, what could be seen. And guess what? That apparition was fully approved by the Catholic Church at the time. After 11 years of investigation, Bishop John Ito, then ordinary of the Diocese of Niigata, officially declared the events regarding the statue and the messages delivered to Sister Agnes Sasagawa to be of supernatural origin. So what's my point? The point is we've been warned. We've been warned of a spiritual war against the powers of hell. It's not just a political war. That's why I started off tonight's show. Yeah, 2024 is all about politics. But somebody somewhere the adults have got to come back in the room and say, man, we are up against principalities and powers. We have to do more to bring spiritual weaponry back into this fight, back into this war, or we're going to lose. You know, the prophesied chastisement that I'm talking about, it's all about what? It's all about massive loss of faith, right? Which will leave the world defenseless against the forces of outright evil. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're seeing right now. And we're going to fight that with politics? <laughs> that's it? We're going to vote Republican? Demons versus the Republican Party? You think that's going to, that's going to work out okay? Friends, it should, it should be obvious. And again, this is what traditional Catholicism has strived over the years to do. We're staying engaged. We live in this world. This is the world in which we live. We are traditional Catholics. But we also <laughs> stress that you can't do this without the spiritual weaponry. We've got to become, in other words, soldiers of Jesus Christ once again. And by that I mean proud soldiers of Jesus Christ, like the Cristeros, like the Vandeans, proudly wearing the Sacred Heart of Jesus, proudly going into battle for Christ the King, right? And this is happening already where people are, are, are coming to realize that. So I, I want to end this show by saying don't you dare lose hope. You know, stay engaged in politics, of course. Follow the lead of great men. You know, great, a great guy like Hilaire Belloc, who on the, on the day that he was, he was running for office, he, was, he held, holds up his rosary and he says to the opposition party, this, this, to me, this is a, 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 such a supremely Catholic moment that it's something we can all think about as we go now into this political year. He holds up his rosary to the opposition party and he says, gentlemen, I am a Catholic. 
As far as possible, I go to Mass every day. This is a rosary. As far as possible, I kneel down and tell these beads every day. If you reject me on the account of my religion, I shall thank God that he has spared me the indignity of being your representative. You feel that? Now that, friends, that is Catholic. That's what we have to get back to. That's what we have to become again, Catholic. And again, there's so many ways of doing that. We're talking about Unite the Clans all the time, of course. In Chartres, France, in a few months, 20,000 are going to march once again. Cardinal, Cardinal Gerhard Muller is going to be saying the Mass at Notre Dame de Chartres, the, the magnificent cathedral of Europe, most magnificent cathedral in Europe, in honor of the kingship of Jesus Christ. And he's saying basically the same thing. We are Catholic. And if that offends you, pound sand! That's what we have to get back to, friends. And as I say, this is happening. I just saw a clip the other day. This is happening in Poland recently. If you look up on your screen here, look at this. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing, friends. Look at all these Catholic men, Catholic priests, proudly in the streets, being Catholic. Here, friends, this, friends, is the answer. Bring the faith of our fathers back into the streets. Stop being ashamed of it. Bring it back into the streets. Bring it back into the public square. Bring it back into politics. Bring it back into your homes. <laughs> I'm sorry. If Pope Francis doesn't like it, well, God wills it. And it's time, friends, it's time, men of Christendom, right? To tell the globalist cabal to go back to hell from whence they came. And I would suggest that we spend 2024 preparing for this next election doing just that with this in our hands. I hope you join me. Thanks very much. I'm Michael Matt. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.